Hello everyone. Today's class is about literary canon. We have already discussed literary canon. This video actually further discusses the concept of literary canon. Literary canon actually is derived from kanoi, which is a Greek word. It means a measuring rod. The ancient Greeks used the kanoi to measure their constructions, to level and straighten them. This is the picture of a canoe. Coming to the concept of literary canon, it refers to a body of texts or works considered to be most important and influential in a particular time or place by which other writings are evaluated. So this definition makes it clear that canon is a leveling and straightening concept, a concept which levels and straightens any work of literature produced in a particular time or place. So a community makes use of the canon to evaluate other works produced in the their time and place. So, canon is a yardstick for measuring those works, their significance in the literary world. So, any work's value is uh, taken with reference to the canon. The canon was, the word canon was first used with reference to Bible. In Bible, there are canonical books and non-canonical books. A canonical book is the one that measures up to the standard of the Holy Scripture or everyone agrees to its authenticity and it is included in the official text of the Bible. And it is considered as divine by the community. While non-canonical text, the community is divided about it regarding its authenticity. So, coming to the concept of canon literature, a canon literary work is, it is accepted by everyone, it has a certain amount of authenticity, it has a value in the community it is produced and it represents the literature of the community or the time or the place. So the concept canon signifies two things. In one way, it can be the authentic accepted works of authors among the many attributed to them. Like an author is attributed with a number of works while a few of them are authoritatively his own or it is accepted as his own while in the case of other works there is a doubt regarding uh, their authenticity. So only those works which are authoritative are called canonical texts of the author. In, in another way you can call an author who is considered as the representative of a particular literature as a canonical author. So, authors like Shakespeare or Milton can be called representatives of the English literature or British literature. Then, you can call them canonical writers. Another concept which is closely related to the concept of canon is Western canon. Western canon is a body of literature, music, philosophy and works of art that is highly valued in the West. For example, Homer, Chaucer, Shakespeare, Socrates and Beethoven represent the Western canon. In the US, there has been debate over the nature and status of canon since at least 1960s. The academia there revolted against the western canon. They argued that 
the body of scholarship is biased because the main focus of the western canon had only been on europe and men they even used the term dead white men where the focus of the, uh, the that was the focus of western canon according to the people who criticized western canon these people actually represent the western canon the picture over here is uh, that of uh, people who belong to the western music canon <clears throat> the social process by which an author or a literary work comes to be considered as canonical is called canon formation the factors which actually determine this canon formation is complex and disputed a body of people including writers critics scholars and academics choose the canon and the boundary of canon is indefinite you can determine where exactly the canon starts it's a process through which these works evolve the as a result of some mutually interactive factors a broad concurrence of critics scholars and authors with diverse viewpoints and sensibilities actually is a main factor in determining the canon people with diverse viewpoints should agree to the value of a text and the persistent influence of a particular work on other authors is actually another determining factor the third important factor is the cultural discourse about the particular work the cultural community actually discusses that work and finally the widespread assignment of an author or a text in school or college curriculum when a particular author is studied by students for a long time you can determine that he is or she is a canonical author there are a few criticisms against canon first is people consider canonical texts as representatives of political politics of power they say that the canonical books especially in the humanistic study not only in literature they have been determined less by artistic excellence than by politics of power and the second criticism against the canonical texts is they are mainly works that convey and sustain the concepts like racism patriarchy and imperialism those works which promote racism patriarchy and imperialism find a place in canon third important factor is that the canon marginalizes and excludes the interests and accomplishments of blacks hispanics and other ethnic minorities and also the achievements of women the working class and popular culture homosexuals and other minorities like new non european civilizations they are finding it quite difficult to find a place in the camp there are a few arguments in defense of canon the canonical works according to the defenders they have high intellectual and artistic quality unlike those who criticize the canon these people believe that it is the intellectual and artistic quality itself that determines the position of a work in the literary canon and they have the power to give delight that's why they are included in the canon 
and they can appeal to a widely shared human concerns and value and they also have the skeptical views about established ways of thinking they are not so traditional as the critics say they actually question the established ways of thinking established ways of the society and they support political radicalism so they argue that the defenders argue that those people who criticize canon for its exclusion and marginalization of certain uh, works of literature they should actually be feel indebted to these canonical texts for their radicalism and uh, out of the box thinking and the, another argument against the um, theorists who challenge the canon is that they criticize the canon in theory but when it comes to applied criticism they refer to these canonical texts so they recognize and confirm in practice the literary canon that they in theory since 1980s the canon has been expanded significantly including women and their minority and other minority groups black asian and other minority writers thus found a place there now no consensus exists regarding canon people are divided about the literary canon in the 21st century new criteria is there for canon it is determined by the rise of technology popular culture widespread education accessibility to books and multiplied genres that means we can't actually make use of the earlier criteria to determine the canonical texts of the 21st century Thank you.